Welcome to this episode of MoGuard TV. I'm your host, Corporal Katie Povis. I'm a recruiter in the St. Louis area for the Missouri National Guard. In this episode, we'll cover two units, a military police company and a medical company, as they train during their monthly drills to prepare for both their federal and state missions. We'll also bring you to the State Best Warrior event, where Missouri Guardsmen put their warrior skills to the test during a grueling three-day competition. Our final story follows an aviation unit in the Guard's counter-drug program. We'll learn about their mission and participation in a community outreach event. The Missouri National Guard is required to meet the same training requirements as the units that they support. As we will see in our first segment, this sometimes requires being sprayed in the face with pepper spray. Guardsmen of the 1137th Military Police Company are training for a series of upcoming deployments to Germany that will be followed by a deployment to the Guantanamo Bay Detention Center in Cuba. Each deployment has its own unique mission and training requirements. On this drill weekend, their training was conducted at the Missouri National Guard training site in Wapapello, Missouri. The courses were developed to train and certify the Guardsmen for three two-week deployments to a U.S. Army base in Germany. The Guardsmen will be supplementing the active duty military police forces while they are away at training. There you go. They have to do their annual training, so we go over there and replace them for a couple weeks while they do their annual requirements where they can't work the road. We take over law enforcement duties for that facility, traffic accidents, traffic stops, respond to calls. So that's what we'll do mostly in Germany. I joined to, to get to experience this type of mission. So I'm, I'm, I'm really excited, looking forward to it. I think it's gonna be fun training with those guys and seeing how they operate. The experience that they're gonna bring back from that will definitely aid us as we're training towards the, uh, the mobilization to Guantanamo Bay. Military police or MPs protect the lives and property on Army installations by enforcing military laws and regulations. They also control traffic, prevent crime, and respond to all emergencies. The MPs that the Guardsmen will be filling in for are issued OC spray, also known as pepper spray. In order for the Guardsmen to be issued OC spray, they had to complete a confidence course that begins with being sprayed in the face with OC spray. Say your name, open your eyes. Say your name. Private Brown, Wapapola training site, I have been sprayed. Let's go. It is a goal and mission oriented mindset that you have to have. They have to put themselves in a place where they can understand that they can still fight through it, that it will go away. This is important because we have to use it in the field occasionally, so we have to know what it's like to be hit by it if we hit each other or ourselves, and that way we know the pain we're causing to anybody who we have to use it on. Right now, I'm really anxious, nervous, but it'll be easier since everyone's going through it together and just knowing once I reach the end, it'll be over. The most difficult part of the training would probably be trying to regain your eyesight. It just like starts sinking in and immediately starts burning. The most difficult stage was probably having to deal with a more combative person. To get through it, you kind of just have to think through it, actually, be like, think past the pain, and it, you have to get your job done one way or another, and sometimes it's a struggle, and a little bit of pain can get you a long way <laughs> if you push through it. It is a big confidence builder that these guys can put themselves in a good mindset that know they can still accomplish their mission and be safe while they're doing it. The drill weekend also involved a stressed 9mm pistol qualification and first aid training. And the idea is to get this done in 60 seconds or less. If you can, it just takes muscle memory and time. And there are tricks I'm going to teach you guys to get it done on tight. 
The Guantanamo Bay or Gitmo deployment is a unique mission for a combat support military police company like the 1137. Fortunately, the unit has had plenty of time to prepare and train for the detention operations mission. I have been given two years in order to prepare my unit, as opposed to in the past, I've had six months or less in the previous three deployments. When they meet that challenge at Gitmo, if you're not ready to go on duty down there, you can really get into a lot of trouble. We're going to be dealing with, I mean, what a lot of people consider the most dangerous people on the planet. So there are obvious risks associated with that, but I think with all the training that we've received and that we'll receive in Primo, I don't think it should be an issue. I think we'll be fine once we get there. Lieutenant Tillman is a prior service guardsman that was a paratrooper with the 82nd Airborne and served two tours of duty in Afghanistan, fighting an enemy that he will now be responsible for detaining. Being able to come back to my home state as a guardsman and then being able to go to Guantanamo Bay and see the fruits of my labor in the past, just kind of see it full circle, I think it's going to be pretty surreal and, and pretty gratifying. What it means to me to be deployed is fulfilling something that I think everybody who serves wants to fulfill. We're all excited. I mean, I'm definitely excited. This is my first time actually going overseas with the unit. As a whole, I think we're all really ready to go and do something other than just training here in the U.S. We've had fun this weekend. I mean, I don't see why anybody wouldn't want to be in the National Guard doing this and having a blast. The 1137th MP Company will continue being busy with training and preparing for its dual state and federal missions. This is a really high op tempo time for us to get three rotations and the logistics involved with getting that many people overseas and back while conducting a mission. And on top of that, preparing for the mission in Guantanamo Bay, not to mention also be prepared for any state emergency duty that may happen. Of course, right now we're in the middle of a tornado season, but these soldiers are motivated and trained and they're, they're prepared to do any of that. The Missouri National Guard must be prepared to respond to any type of disaster, even a chemical, radiological, biological, or nuclear one. In our next story, guardsmen conduct training in mass decontamination procedures. The 206 Area Support Medical Company from Springfield spent a recent drill weekend doing decontamination or decon training. The training comes about because way back when, when we're talking about yearly training calendars and what we want to train on in the future years, we talk about which tasks we specifically want to work into our schedules. And sea burning, chemical, biological, radiological, and nuclear training was one of the topics that we wanted to work into. So today we trained on how to set up a patient decontamination station and how to treat sea burning casualties. The general purpose of decon is to triage the patients as well as decontaminate them from whatever they've been exposed to. And that's a two-part process that has to happen simultaneously. In addition to Major Winters, the training was overseen by two subject matter experts from the 7th Weapons of Mass Destruction Civil Support Team, Captain Legall and Captain Looper. The 7th CST is a federally funded unit of full-time Missouri National Guard soldiers that would assist civil authorities and first responders in the event of a chemical, biological, or nuclear attack. We do extensive training with the fire departments, law enforcement, and with personnel here in the state of Missouri. And we are a full-time asset that they have that they can call through SEMA to assist them in any kind of incident here in the state of Missouri. Captain Legall and Captain Looper gave some instruction, but let the soldiers do most of their learning through a simulated decon station. Ran a few scenarios and let them actually do some hands-on patient decon with some of their own personnel as we watched and evaluated to help work them through some of the issues that they'll have to deal with in a patient decon scenario. And then also tell the cold zone what you got. I feel that the soldiers got what they put into it, I'm glad that they got just familiarization, just to learn how a decon site should look, how it sets up, how chaotic it can be. It's real easy to make a mistake. The decon simulation was broken down into three zones, hot, warm, and cold. In the hot zone, soldiers would normally wear full body personal protective equipment, or PPEs, and interact with people that are believed to be contaminated with chemicals, biological agents, or radiation. 
You don't want to bring that contamination over the hotline and into the warm where you have your decon personnel working and then transfer it over to your personnel that do not have PPE on back in the cold zone. So it's a delineation to keep from transferring contamination over those lines. The trainers added some real world chaos into the training process. We tried to simulate some patients that would have anxiety attacks or panicking as it will happen. It's undoubtedly going to happen. Try and get them used to this is my zone, I am in control of it, and controlling the troops that they have as well as the patients that may not be completely cooperative. So that's why we were putting some of the lower enlisted E2s, E3s as leadership roles, just to give them a feel for, wow, there's a lot going on I have to manage all at once. After participating in several guided phases of the decon station, the soldiers were graded during a final run through of the course. I think the training was very relevant. Anytime a mass cal happens or a situation where we need to triage, I think we'll revert back to this training, absolutely. We went through a lot of scenarios and a lot of teamwork and communication, just preparing for what could happen. Captain Looper was impressed with the work ethic of the 206 ASMC. Everybody is very receptive of the training. They all were very enthusiastic, jumped in there and wanted to train hard. There's a great bunch of soldiers here that really enjoy their job. And, and when you're training people who enjoy their job, it makes the training much easier. Everyone comes into it with a good attitude and that helps tremendously in getting things accomplished. The training was fun. It was very informative, it was new. It's something different that we don't deal with on a daily basis. The training was very thorough, very detailed. The morale in the unit's very high, and I think it's because they have good camaraderie amongst themselves when they are training. There is a strong bond between all of us. We've all been through most of the same training together. We do everything together. I would consider all of us to be friends, which is important that cohesion is what helps our unit work together so well. After the break, we'll bring you coverage from the Missouri National Guard's State Best Warrior Competition and follow two guardsmen throughout the events. It's in your blood, your instincts, your gut. It's in that voice in your head that says, I can be something better, something stronger. We've been waiting for you and your resolve to protect this great land you love. Are you up to it? It's up to you, the Air National Guard. The Missouri National Guard held its annual State Best Warrior Competition at Camp Crowder in Neosho, Missouri. The three-day competition is a series of events that challenge the Guardsmen on their physical agility, mental agility, and Army warrior skills. It also prepares the winning Guardsmen for the regional competition. It is 10 events in 50 hours. They start the day with a PT test and they go through a written exam, they fire M9, they fire M4, they do day and night navigation, 12 mile road march, army warrior tasks, an appearance board before a bunch of command sergeants major. It's physical, it's mental, everything is about endurance. Seeing what you can do after hours of doing these non-stop tasks and see if you can keep all that straight in your head and you're not always going to be fresh and ready to use them. You can be tired, you can be with no sleep or no food, no water, and you'll still have to complete those tasks. These are truly the best across the state, so they represent the 8,400 or so enlisted soldiers. The competitors are broken down into two categories, non-commissioned officers or NCOs and soldiers, with the soldier category made up of the first three Army ranks and there are five NCOs and five soldiers who competed this year, and I'd be proud to take any one of them to the regional competition. Specialist Parent was in the soldier category and Staff Sergeant Santana, the NCO. I've never been extremely competitive. I don't know, I've never had a really competitive attitude. I'm all for being in competitive events and stuff, but I've never been like that person that just has to win something and beat myself up over it if I don't. I just, I do this because 
it's something more to do, something to further myself, and keeps me motivated. I did fairly well compared to everyone else, but you know, I don't hold myself to, to those standards. I hold myself to a, a much higher standard. I was a bit disappointed that I missed four targets out of 40 on the stress shooting. Good job. Can't believe I missed that one. Lock, load, watch and shoot, watch and shoot, fire! The marksmanship events began on day one with a qualification course for the M9 pistol and the M4 rifle. After the qualification course, the stress shoot events were held. Much like a biathlon, the stress shoots involve running through a course to different firing positions. Staff Sergeant Santana was born in Mexico and immigrated to the U.S. when he was 11 years old. His whole family is from Mexico. The eldest of seven siblings, education was his way out of a cycle of poverty. He is simultaneously working on a second bachelor's degree and master's degree. I'm the first to graduate out of middle school in my family, in high school and college. I separated from active duty and joined the National Guard. I've been, I've been here for three years and I absolutely love it. If I had to pay to come to the National Guard, I would pay to come work at the National Guard. It's just a, an incredible community of people. Physically, I'm okay. Usually I can keep running and pretty good at pushing through the physical limitations I have, but mentally sometimes I know when I'm, if, I'm, if my body's tired, my mind's gonna be tired and I'll miss something. Do you? Nope. So you know what you did wrong? Yeah, I, I didn't know you had to be right on the volume. One of the most demanding events of the competition is the 12 mile road march. 12 miles of walking with 35 pounds on your back is tough. Welcome to the start of the 12 mile road march. We have a chance to rain this morning, but otherwise for uh, road marching, it's going to be fairly nice. Congratulations for making it this far. Uh, today is going to be really, really tough, but on a positive note, today is the last day. Specialist Perrin came in first for the 12 mile road march in the soldier category. The competitors had a three hour time limit to complete the march. The State Best Warrior competition has a grueling obstacle course, but this year, rain closed down the event due to safety concerns. This has been the first year where weather has played a huge part in what we've done. Each competitor must successfully complete a series of Army warrior tasks, including first aid, reacting to fire, and calling in reports. I say again, your standard. Current situation requires you to send a spot rep in standard format and send to the next higher element. Our activity was to break contact, gather the intelligence, report to checkpoint one. I'll copy over. That's a good copy. Let me talk to Sergeant uh, Green real quick. Okay. okay, stay stay tight. Specialist Perrin made a mistake that would disqualify him from completing the task. What format is this in? It's a salute for him. Sorry. What was the performance measure at this location? Spot reps, sorry. Is this the right format? No. This is, that's the next best thing I had, Sergeant. Okay, Roger. Okay. All yeah. right, at this station, you're going to be a no go. Roger. Okay. Let's go see where that came from. Come on, Sergeant. You gotta do something. The bleeding has not stopped. I will proceed to the next level and apply a tourniquet. So what would be the very last step that you would do? Make sure his airway is clear. Make sure he's breathing. The state best warrior competition also serves to build a guardsman's individual reputation along with their units. The biggest thing is bragging rights. Each platoon wants to have the best soldier who wins and represents the rest of the company, a battalion, and so on. Last year, our soldier and NCO from Missouri won the region, so we swept the event at the region, which is seven states, about 60,000 soldiers, and we won it all. We were pretty happy with that, and of course, I got to point out to all the other state command sergeants major that uh, Missouri swept it. The fellow guardsmen couldn't help but assist one another throughout the competition. They were helping each other. They were saying, hey, don't do that, do this. 
or hey, don't forget this step. Still want to beat each other, but they still want to see each other succeed. This year, it was much more diverse than what I've seen in the past. That's fantastic for us. We want that to reflect our environment and our demographic. Both the enlisted and soldier categories had a female guardsman compete. They're very, very impressive. Our soldier competitor, she came in within the top four or five on the ruck march, so they've shown that they deserve to be here. Having successfully completed the competition, each guardsman carries the pride of being one of the state's best warriors. You guys right here on front row, best in the state. Before, without further ado, I would like the front row to stand up. <laughs> Both Staff Sergeant Santana and Specialist Perrin were the winners in their categories and will represent their units and the Missouri National Guard at the regional competition. In our final segment, we'll learn about an aviation unit in the Missouri National Guard's counter drug program and their community outreach. During 2015, Counter Drug Aviation, one of several components of the Missouri National Guard's Counter Drug Initiative, flew 490 hours conducting aerial surveillance and reconnaissance missions in support of 38 federal, state, and local agencies, resulting in the seizure of over $9 million in drugs, cash, property, and weapons. We support uh, local, state, and federal law enforcement agents in narcotics investigations. We basically just give the agency a platform from which they can observe or support guys on the ground. The helicopter we fly is the LUH-72 Alpha, uh, also known as the Lakota, usually piloted by two pilots and then a camera operator, so three crew all together. We'll fly, on average, maybe two, three times a week. Some missions require uh, anywhere from one to two flight hours all the way up to five or six flight hours. We're on call 24-7. If I'm at home eating dinner and I get a phone call, and, uh, and I come in and along with a couple other guys and, and we'll do the mission. I really enjoy the job. I guess the biggest thing is I really like supporting the agents on the ground because I know there, there have been cases where agents on the ground wouldn't have been able to complete their mission without our support. We give them a, a different a viewpoint of what's happening on the ground. We turn it from a three-dimensional view almost into a four-dimensional view of, um, of the operation that they've got going on. With counter drug, one of the biggest challenges each year is addressing the threats and vulnerabilities within our state. And when we look at this, we just uh, address most of our threats with the enforcement action, and that's working with the uh, law enforcement agencies and flying cover and security and surveillance missions for them. But one of the other aspects is one of the vulnerabilities, and that's uh, trying to get to the youth before somebody else does and has a, a worse impact on their lives. So we want to be able to get out there and show them uh, the positive aspect of law enforcement and the military. Um, you know, one of the events we did was working with Peer Court in Jackson County and DEA, and we got to go out there and talk to the youth and meet them and hopefully steer their life in a positive direction as opposed to some of the negative influences that they get exposed to otherwise. Very complicated engine, very expensive engine. Costs about as much as a house. What went on here today was a meeting of Peer Court of Southeast Jackson County, and Peer Court's purpose is to engage teenagers in a way where they can get exposure to different areas of law, law enforcement, the judiciary, et cetera. So tonight was valuable because the guard came out and they got to see the helicopter, they got to engage with guard members, they got to see the Humvee, and so whenever they're out there making decisions, not only about what they do or don't want to do when they're older, but also whether or not they should try that drug or something like that, they will reference their conversations that they had tonight with one another and with the guard members, and they're going to think, Man, I really like that guy, or he was a real person, or they cracked jokes with one another. Did you see them banter back and forth? And so tonight, getting in there with them and having fun with them, the kids had an absolute blast. It is now my honor to introduce the commander of the Missouri National Guard the Adjutant General, Major General Steve Danner. Thank you, Corporal Povis, and thank you viewers for watching this episode of MoGuard TV. 
One of the strategic goals of the Missouri National Guard is to champion a culture of readiness. Just as we observed a medical company conduct decontamination training, each unit must complete their essential training to maintain preparedness. The Missouri National Guard has both a state and federal mission. We saw how the 1137th Military Police Company is training to succeed in their upcoming federal overseas mission. Through our counter-drug aviation unit, we enhance the capabilities of local, state, and federal law enforcement agencies. Our second strategic goal is to empower our soldiers and airmen. The state's best warrior competition is an opportunity for our guardsmen to be mentors and to push their warrior skills to the limit. Congratulations to the winners, and we wish them the best of luck at the regional competition. That's it for this episode of MoGuard TV. On behalf of Governor Jay Nixon and our nearly 12,000 Missouri Guardsmen, thank you for your support.